So the next step is to make a trim kit. And this is smaller sections that can be used to decorate your modular pieces. And this helps your scene look less repetitive and also gives you something to cover up any kind of errors or gaps or ugly overlapping sections. So for this, as this is kind of like a saloon, we're gonna make several wooden beams that can go on the inside to look like the construction frame of the building and also some planks that we can use for the outside decking and any signage and stuff like that. So the first thing we need to do is go to our polygon cube and we can drag out a new cube here. Um, I'm just gonna make it the same height as the warp section. Okay. Now the pivot is currently center and I want it to be at one end of the beam. So I'm gonna hold D to manipulate the pivot and hold X to snap to grid. And I'm just gonna move this down in the Y and snap this to the grid section here. Okay, now we want this to be in the center rather than in a corner because this is gonna be able to be moved more freely around the scene. And you could even keep this pivot right in the center for this, depending on what your usage is gonna be like. Okay, now this is gonna be a really simple scene. So the only kind of detail I'm gonna do on this is I'm gonna select all the edges and just give it a little bevel. So we shift, right click and go to bevel edge. And then I'm gonna turn the fraction down. Now if your fraction is moving too fast, you can hold control, which will slow that down. And you can just put a small bevel on the edge of this. I'm gonna put 0.7 on there. And what this will do is it'll make it just look a little bit more high poly and the edges of this will catch the light slightly and just overall make it look a little bit more high quality and less boxy. So next I'm going to make, give this a quick unwrap. So if we open the UV editor, select this. Now let's see how this unwraps with the base unfold. So if we unfold that there, we can see we get this. So I want to cut this off here. that again, orient them and lay it out. And I'm just going to do a couple of cuts here and here. So that this can relax and not be stretched. Now we set these UV shells and either unfold or go to optimize. That should relax a little bit, orient them. And you just wanna make sure that there's no parts of your shell crossing over. So once that's unfolded, let's create some variation up this because I don't want it to be completely straight. I want it to look a little bit more warped. So I'm gonna to go to edges, right click edge. I'm gonna select the inner edges shift right click and go to connect tool and then holding shift and middle mouse button i'm going to drag to the side and add a few more edges in here not too many and then i'm just going to go over these edges one by one and just very very slightly not too much i don't want anything too obvious but i'm just going to take them out of sync a little bit now I don't want to do anything too obvious because this is going to be repeated in lots of places across the whole scene. So anything too obvious will be too noticeable. So I'm going to duplicate this now. And I'm going to make a half size one. So I'm going to select some of these edges. Double click these edges and then called control and backspace to delete the edges and the vertex. And I'm going to select the top vertex here and I'm going to move these down. So if you hold control, if you hold X, you can move these and snap them to a, a grid point. But if you find that they're flattening out, so if we have a look at this here, if I hold X and go down, you can see that it flattens them together. So we can change this to, to component and that will allow us to move it to a grid point without that flattening out. And we can also snap this to the upper vertex so that we can have this end exactly on the halfway point. So we can go hit spacebar, spacebar, and then the halfway point here would be this line here. So we can now hold X, and go down. So now we've got one and a half. So this is exactly halfway on the other pillar. It doesn't necessarily matter if you get it dead on because these aren't as strict in the modular aspects because they're gonna be used 
a little bit more freely throughout the scene. But it is good to have a starting point of something like that where it's like half. Now let's just move these. And I'm going to do another one and this time half again, so a quarter size one. Okay, and now I want one more piece because I want like a, uh, a crossbar there. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this, move it up, and I'm going to make it a little bit skinnier. And I'm going to rotate it. Doesn't matter by how much. I'll line the bottom with that there. And then I'm going to select vertex, move this here. So I can add some struts then. Okay, now I can open these back up in the UV editor and relax these again. So I just need to unfold these. Now we've, we've wobbled them about a little bit, so they will be a little bit more out of whack but that's fine we can leave it like that you can straighten them it won't make it much of a difference really it depends if you're doing a custom texture or if you're using a trim sheet so that's a pre-made texture that you're lining this up with in that case you'd want to straighten them um, but as we're going to be taking this to substance painter it's okay if they are more uh, relaxed so that they they match the the wobbly nature of it here So I'm just unfolding, orienting, optimizing, and then laying them out. And then I'd like to do a heavier, larger beam for across the top. So let's see, I want this going kind of across the whole thing. Let's just close our UV editor there. Okay, so with this, what I'm gonna do is drag out too wide, and I'm gonna go halfway across this scene. And then I'm going to make that quite a large, heavy piece. Might actually make that slightly wider and taller than that. Let's see what it looks like in place. Okay. And like the other one, I'm going to select the edges and bevel. Make sure that is unfolded nicely. So I'm just cutting these to alleviate a little bit of the warping. Probably doesn't matter really. It's very, very little. And then let's add a few edges to this. And again, give them a little bump around. All right then, so the last thing I want to make is some planks to kind of match these planks that we've got here. Uh, so I'll probably make them a little bit bigger than this. So I'm just going to do, just going to do two. And I'll probably make a kit much more robust than this with a lot more different pieces. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I think two will be fine. So I'm just going to make them that thick. I'm going to make them a little thicker than that, a little wider, sorry. Let's grab those edges, give it a bevel. Let's make sure this is unfolded nicely, a bit weird. Let's cut these edges off. And let's add a few edges to this as well. Let's mess them up a little bit. Mess them up. And again, you know, nothing too obvious or else you'll see the repeating pattern a little bit too much. Now let's just duplicate that over and just make a second one. Let's make a short one as well, might as well. So let's select these, fold, optimize, orient, layout. Let's 
Okay then. So we have, I think, enough. I mean, I would like to make more planks and stuff like that. You know, you can make you could make quite a large kit for yourself quite easily. Uh, so one thing we need to do is select all of these. They all need to be laid out in the same tile because it's going to be just a single texture for all of it. But we need to make sure that they're all facing the same direction so that we can do some kind of fake wood grain on it and we don't have to mess around with trying to make it run in different directions. So let's orient this one. Uh, sorry, let's uh, so let's rotate this one. I think that's all of them running in the right direction. And let's lay out this. Okay. Now, I'm just doing an auto layout here, but I'd normally lay something like this out by hand. And at the same time as well, I would probably, I'd probably lay out this to only take up maybe three quarters of this map. And I'd leave myself space to add extras to it. Because when I'm doing a kit like this, you know, for the first pass, uh, I'm not quite sure what I'll need. So it's always a good idea to leave yourself some space so that you can keep adding to it. So for example, if I wanted some carved details coming off the edges, if I wanted a couple more different variations of these or these or some, maybe even some like iron nails in there or hooks and stuff, I could add them to this spur space that I've got. And that would give me a more robust and accurate kit without having to make entirely new textures um, and take up more uh, texture space and you know complicate things so it's a good idea to do it in stages so this would be our first stage okay then so let's just close this editor so we are going to take these straight into substance painter and then bake these and do some texturing the problem is is when we bake these from this which is a low poly you're going to get some issues with the edges uh, so you'll get jagged edges across uh, these here because it doesn't like to bake around these corners on stuff that is so low poly um, and you know we could, we could we could ramp up all the settings but it's not really going to get rid of it what we what i would normally do is take these into zbrush subdivide them add maybe a little bit of uh, detail on the edges and chips and, and whir and stuff like that and if you want to know how to do that you can go to my sculpting stylized wood tutorial and that will give you some tips on how to do different types of stylized wood but for the purposes of this tutorial i'm going to just duplicate these and make a second set and just subdivide them in here so we have something to bake from that's a little bit more high poly and to do that what i'm going to do is just lay these out quite neatly in the center of the world so i want to lay them out so nothing's touching each other and we can see everything quite clearly so something like this and then we need to name all these to make sure it's nice and clean. So uh, first of all, we just select them all and go to delete history and freeze transformation. So let's call this saloon trim kit A beam A large. Okay, so we've got all these named. Now what I want to do is create a second version of these that we can subdivide here. This is, can be a little bit annoying to do this depending on how detailed your assets are. Uh, but I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to create a new layer with the selected object. So I've got all these objects selected and I'm going to call this uh, trim kit low, trim kit low poly. Okay, and then I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this trim kit high. All right, and then I'm going to hit control D to duplicate these. With the, with the duplicate selected, I'm going to right click the trim kit high and add selected objects. Okay, and then I'm going to hide the trim kit low. And then I'm also going to isolate this as well so I can just see these. So now I need to go around each one of these and prep them for subdivision. So if we select one of these and hit three on the keyboard, that will subdivide it. And you can see it really does soften it off and we don't want it to soften off that much. We want it to look like pretty much like this, um, but just a little bit more detailed. Uh, we can do that by going around this and adding some restraining edges. And a good way to do that is with the multi-cut tool. So I'm just going to add a cut there, very close to that edge. Now if I hit three, you can see how sharp that edge has gone. So I just need to repeat that for each edge that I want to remain sharp.
Now we hit three, we can see that's quite a nice sharp edge on that wood. And maybe I want to add one there to keep that a little bit sharper. Just check around the whole model. Turn off wireframe. So make sure you check around the whole model because anywhere you miss might not bake properly. Okay, so I'm just going to do that for the rest of these and then we can export this for Substance Painter. Okay, so once we've done that, we've checked all the edges to make sure that nothing is too different from the original shape we can check it against the low poly you can see that lines up really well we want to just select the high poly now we can permanently subdivide this so if we select this hit one on the keyboard so there's no subdivision we can go up here to this smooth and add a level of subdivision so we put one subdivision level on there okay and then i'm going to select it again i'm just going to shove another one on as well so now we've got our high poly and low poly so i'll hit delete history and freeze the transformations for that and then with the trim kit low still hidden and unselected i'm going to go to file export selected and in the Maya folder, I'm going to create a new folder for Trimkit and I'm going to export them out as OBJs and call that Trimkit A High. Then I'm going to hide that high and unhide the low and I'm going to export that out as Trimkit A Low. Now we are ready to create a high to low poly bake for this trim kit and get them painted in Substance Painter. Okay, in Substance Painter, we want to load in our low poly. So go to new and we're going to put this in Unreal Engine 4 so we can make sure that's set on UE4. And we want to search for our low poly. So that's trim kit A low and click OK. All right then, so you should have something like this. Now, the first thing you want to do is just check that everything's there correctly. So if we just jump over here, we can change from 3D to 2D or 3D and 2D. And we just want to check out these UV maps. Basically, you want to make sure that you've got all your UV islands here and that they aren't accidentally on the wrong UV tile or something like that. So until you bake the maps, basically, all you've really got is the UVs to go from. Substance Painter doesn't know which way up things are, how thick things are, and it especially doesn't know what edges and cavities are. So we give Substance Painter a bunch of maps that are basically instructions of describing what this model is. So we go to Bake Mesh Maps, and first of all, let's just leave this on 512, and we can go do High Definition Meshes here, and we can select our High Trim Kit A High. Okay, now this High Poly doesn't need UVs or anything like that. All it is is just the mesh. All we need is the normals from each individual poly. And we can leave all the other settings the same for now and just do a quick bake to make sure everything's coming out okay. Now this quick bake just allows us to very quickly just be able to see any errors that might be happening on this model and everything looks okay. And what I'm looking for here is any areas that ha might have flat spots on them. And this is very simple. I mean, there's no detail on the high poly. We've not taken it through ZBrush or anything. So really it shouldn't have any issues or any area for there to be much error other than around the corners. And I think that's coming out okay. We can come back to best bake mesh maps here and we can increase all the settings and get some nice crisp maps out. So what I'm going to do is just change the output size to 2K or you can do that 4K. Um, but anything over 2K starts to get quite slow in the baking and we can also change anti-aliasing to say 4x4. If you want something really crisp, you can go for 4K or even 8K and 8x8, but it will take maybe even up to an hour to bake depending on how complex the mesh is. So I'm going to leave everything else the same and just bake these textures. Okay, so once we've baked the high definition one, we can have another look over here. And 
We can see here we've gotten some weird little errors or maybe even in places some jagged edges. And what's causing this is that when we exported the low poly, we also exported it with hard edges um, and they are fighting with the soft edges of the high poly. So if we actually have a look at the normal, we can see it's got this odd double line across here. So what we can do to fix that, we can go back to our Maya scene, select just the low poly, go to mesh display and soften edges. Okay, and you should get something like this. Then we can select all them and export them again. Uh, Re-export over low poly. And then back in Substance Painter, we can simply go to Edit, Project Configuration, and change our low poly for that new one. Then click OK. So that will update the low poly mesh. Now if we go back to Bait Mesh Maps, we can rebate this. Now we have our nice soft edges from our high poly. And if you've done any ZBrush details in this as well, that should all come through nicely. And that would be ideal, really. This is a little bit plain for going through this much trouble. But this is the exact kind of um, steps you'd take for ZBrush. And this would add a nice little bit of detail. So I'm just gonna go back to 3D view. And the first thing I wanna do is create the base color. So I'm just gonna create another fill. And I'm going to change the base color here to something that kind of matches the tiling texture. So we've got the tiling texture here, and I'm going to use this as my reference. And if you hold Shift in Substance Painter and right click and drag, you can move the light around to better see the bit that you're working from. Okay, I think that'll do for now. And then I also just want to set the base roughness as well. So I don't want this to be too shiny. So I'm going to go to something pretty much in the middle there. And the next thing I'm going to do is make the edge highlights for this as well. So this texturing process is going to be really, really simple. I don't want to go into too much detail here. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to set the color of it to lighter. And then I'm going to right click this and add a black mask. Now I'm actually going to just grab something out of the smart masks. So if we go down here. I'm going to go for edges strong scratch and just drag that and drop it onto that black mask. Okay, and you can see we've got some edge highlighting here. And we can go into the curvature there and we can kind of change the balance of it. Bring that curvature up as well to kind of get a little bit on the front of it as well. Okay, and now I, it's it's all quite even at the moment, so I want to mask out some of this. So I'm going to simply right click this again and add a, I'm going to add a fill. And then in that fill, I'm just going to pick a grunge texture. Something quite contrasty. Maybe something like, something like this. All right, now the next thing I want to do is change the blending of this because it is, when you put a new layer in here, it just removes what's underneath. So I'm gonna change this from normal to subtract so that it just subtracts from the layer that's underneath, which is the edge highlight. And then I can come back to this grunge map here and I can change the contrast and the balance to change how much it adds and removes. Okay, so now we've got some simple edge highlights. So I want to add some quick variation here and some kind of fake stylized wood grain so one of the things i like to do is just simply add a map to this that has some contrast in it and so i already have a map here so this is just done in photoshop it's just a few brush strokes made to tile in photoshop really really simple and i've also got a black and white version as well that i like to use for a little bit of roughness value grab these and drag them into substance painter and I'm going to change them to just current session and they are textures so I'll import them so we've got them here and um, I'm going to add another layer between these two and I'm going to put the color into base color here to add some variation and then we have set this to on the UV map you can see we've got all our pieces of wood running in the same direction so that we know that if we squish this this way it's going to look like wood grain going up and down here. So let's go back to 3D view and we can kind of adjust this until we're happy with it. Oh, I kind of like that. 
So you can see this has added some contrast here. And then what we can do is we're in base color on the layers, so we can actually go to this uh, and change the opacity. So we can have it just coming through a little bit. Or if you've got a lot of complicated other layers, procedural layers here, what we can do is change this from normal blending to something like you know, dodge or multiply or soft light or overlay. I mean, it's not much happening right now because there's not really much for it to, to show on. But as this is really simple, I think just normal would be fine and change the opacity right down because I don't want it too, too strong. And then I can also add a roughness to this, but actually I'm going to turn roughness off on this and everything but just color. I'm going to make a separate layer for the roughness. So I'm just going to add another one and I'm going to turn everything off other than rough. And I'm going to grab this and drop that in there as well. And again, I'm going to change the scaling of this. Now we want some control over the roughness. So what we need to do is be able to control the gray levels on this. And we can do that by right clicking and just adding the levels. And then if we go up to here in levels, we can change this from base color to roughness. And now you can see our roughness ramp. So by moving these, so I'm moving these, which is the black and the white, we can clamp those values and make them a little bit more, a little bit stronger. And we can change the roughness level of this so that we can get some variation across the surface. And when you're messing with the roughness, get used to holding shift and right click and dragging in the background just to move the light around so you can get an idea of how this will look in scene. Now, be aware, roughness does tend to show up a lot more strongly in, in UE4 than in Substance Painter. Uh, I, I find it does, especially in, in bright lighted rooms. So you can be you can be quite subtle with this. So I'm going to get it somewhere that I like. I think there's a nice variation there. And then what I'm going to do is just change the layers to the roughness and then change the overall opacity of that roughness layer down so it's not quite so strong. And then finally, I'm going to go back up to our edge were layer. And in the roughness of this, I'm just going to turn this roughness right down. And when you do that, you might find that that edge were goes a little bit darker because the roughness or the shininess of it was making it lighter. And in which case you might want to then come here and just turn this up a little bit so it's a bit more noticeable. And again, when you're doing this, you know, you want to make sure that you've not got any kind of shapes or patterns on here that are too obvious because this is stuff that's going to be repeated a lot and be in quite close proximity. The more obvious it's going to be that it's not a unique item. All right. And as there is no more other details on this, um, so there's no cavities and stuff. And you could spend some time doing some hand painted wood grain on this. That would look nice. But for this, I think this is enough. So first thing we want to do is make sure we save this scene so in my textures folder i'm going to make a new folder called trim kit a and here in this i'm going to make a new folder called painter and in that i'm going to save this painter file okay and then i'm going to go to file export textures set my output directory and i'm going to put that in textures trim kit a and then we want to select unreal engine 4 so that we get the best output for our intended destination and I have made a new Unreal Engine 4 here, and I've called it Unreal Engine 4 Packed Project Name. And what that is, if we just go to Output Template here, and I show you what the Unreal Engine 4 output is, you can see it does Mesh, Texture Set, Normal, okay? And I don't care about the Texture Set name or the Mesh name, really. What I want is the project name, which is Trim Kit A. So if we look at the one that I've made, all I've done is I've set dollar sign projects. So it's going to have the project name, which is what we've just saved. So trim kit a underscore, and then the name of that layer. I've also added an opacity layer here. You don't need that because you'll always, you'll also have the um, opacity in your base color. So I've selected my output. Everything else is fine. And it's going to export at 2k, which is what we set the project to originally. Okay. So now we've got our textures exported. We can go back to Maya and we can get these ready for UE4. So we can hide our trim kit high poly. We don't need that anymore. And we can start saving these out one by one. Okay. And before we export these, you want to just make sure the pivots are in the correct place. So these don't necessarily click together in, in any kind of rigid way. If you had a pipe system, you'd have to have the pivots in a very specific point to make sure that they all line up and fit in to one another perfectly. But this is very loose modularity on these beams because they can be used in all different situations. So I'm just going to kind of have the pivot point 
dead center and bottom for these ones. That's fine. And for these ones, I would like the pivot in the corner like this. Here I'm lining up the pivots with the bottom corners of each one of these objects. Now as these don't really have a top or bottom and can be used in multiple ways, it's actually probably best to keep the pivots right in the center. If an object has a bottom, so if it has to, or if it's usually sat on a floor on legs, then you might want to put the pivots um, in line with the floor so that it's easy to place. But with stuff like this, you can put the pivot in the center of the object. Okay, once you're happy with your pivot placements, select all your meshes, go to delete history, freeze transformations, and then either move all these to the center of the world and save them out. Or if you've got PBUDK, you can add them to that and export them all at the same time. Okay, so now it's time for the actual fun part and that's decorating this scene and making it look like an actual cabin. So again, we've been through this before. What we need to do is grab our FBXs and drag them in. If you're not sure which ones they are, you can arrange it by date modified here and just grab the latest ones. So we can grab all of our stuff at once and drag them in and just make sure that it's not going to create any materials or load in any textures there and import all. Okay. And with all them selected, I'm just going to right click and go to edit. Okay. And then create our material. So we can go back to our materials folder, right click new material, trim kit A, and then we can drag our new materials into that folder. And again, we need to remember to go to our mix map here and just tick off sRGB and save that. Then we can open that trim kit A and drag these new textures into there. So base color to base color, normal to normal. And then we want to go red to the bottom, ambient occlusion, next one up, green to the next one up, roughness. And the last one, metallic. Really simple, click save. And then we can add this material to each one of our kit pieces. And at the same time as well, I'm going to go over and change the light map resolution for any of the larger pieces. I think 64 is fine for that. I'll make this one 128. All right then, so let's grab our models and start decorating this scene. So first of all, I'm just going to do the inside here. And I'm going to grab my beam and the support. And you can see because I set up them pivots, they all snap into the correct places and I'm going to duplicate this, rotate it around. And if you find that you need to make small adjustments, it doesn't quite matter as much with these small pieces that they fit to a grid because it is more like just set dress. So what you can do is you can turn the grid off so you can move it by small degrees. You can turn it back on if you want to quickly snap two pieces together. Now I actually want these beams to stick out further. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to turn off the constraints on the scale and I'll just make them, I'm going to scale them up by just a little bit. And because these, again, are very simple materials, very stylized, you won't see the stretching in this um, hardly anything at all. And I think that's one of the, the, the really cool things about the stylized stuff is that you can get away with a lot more stretching and, uh, you know, any, any kind of simple materials. But next time you play an Overwatch or something like that, just have a look around and see just how far they t tend to to push the materials is quite surprising. And so these pieces are great for covering up any seams that you might be getting, especially if like what we discussed earlier on, if you have shadows that are caused by the baking that you just can't get rid of, making trim pieces like this is a real good way to hide those shadows and those little errors. And if you've scaled it and want to reset the size, you can just come down here and hit one and that'll go back to its original size. Now I'm going to use some of these beams to add some detail around the frame of the door. And because we haven't done any very specific details on any of these, we can get away with the quite extreme scaling here. And if, there was, if this was more realistic wood, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look right. You'd be able to notice that it, it stretched a lot more easily. So you'd have to have a lot more kit pieces to do to cover the same amount of work.
Um, when you're doing these kind of things where it's repetitive, you want to try to rotate them around in all directions to get the most out of it as possible. And you can even do stuff like this where you just go to scale, make sure scale's on. And then we can say scale it in the Y by minus one. And that will basically just flip those over. No problem at all. So turn off snapping off and just add a little bit of rotation as well. So add some extra variation into this make them look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I pushed this kind of quite far with this very limited kit. So you can see how much I've got out of this. If we just had a few more pieces, how much more rich this and vibrant this would be. Um, you know, these is just a few planks at the moment. It would be great to have some smaller pieces, a few more long pieces. There are some that have been pushed a little bit too far. So this one at the side here, you can see the stretching is starting to get a little bit noticeable on here. And there's also some patches that are quite repetitive like this little mark here. So at this point what I could do is go back into Substance Painter, find the layer with my marks on and just reduce the obviousness of that. And maybe even come up here to the offset and just change that a little bit so that pattern is not quite so obvious on there. And then we can go Export Textures and just simply export over the old textures because we've not changed the name of them or anything. All we need to do is come back into UE4, go to our texture file, materials, textures, select those three textures, right click and re-import. And we can see them update there. So now we've got rid of some of the repeating patterns. There's still a bit more, but I would expect you to spend a little bit longer than this on getting those textures a bit better. The other thing I would probably add as well is I would add an end grain to these so that these can be used in more different ways because at the moment the grain just runs around the corner there. So it'd be nice to add another layer with a different end grain pattern for each one. That would make this a lot more interesting to look at. So the next thing I'm going to do is marry all these intersecting pieces together because there's quite a lot of intersecting pieces here. And one way to help them fit in and feel more planted into the scene is to add a post-processing volume. But first I need to clean the scene up. So I'm just going to select all these copied pieces. I'm going to go up to folder, add a new folder, and I'm going to call these trim kit A. Now we can see around our scene a little bit easier. So I'm going to go to 
the place actors here and I'm going to search for post processing volume and I'm going to drag that in and just place it in the scene here come down to the bottom here and we can just tick on infinite extent unbound so that will affect everything in the scene no matter where the camera is placed and we want to go up to uh, rendering features and go to ambient occlusion we just want to tick both of these on and then increase that ambient occlusion power and reduce the um, fade of it the radius and what this do it'll just it'll just add a little bit of shadow where things intersect and help make them feel a little bit more set in the world and because this is kind of a stylized scene I'm also going to change the exposure so I'm going to open up exposure under lens I'm going to set a minimum and maximum brightness I'm just going to set that to one and one and that'll stop the light getting bright and dark when we go into the shadows and then I can do an exposure control here so I'm just going to go 1.2 bring the lights up a little bit and then I'm going to grab the sun in the sky here the light source and I'm going to bring this down to about 1.5 I'm going to change the direction to this to kind of almost sunset so I'm going to bring that quite low and if we click the sky box we can update that refresh material so it's late evening now and we've got some of them golden tones and then I'm going to duplicate our light in here just put two of them in here for now and I'm going to increase the brightness of this to say eight and I'm also going to use temperature for this and I'm going to lower this temperature to about let's try 5,000 yeah just to make it more warm I can imagine this would be oil lamps or something like that um, so we can get this to be a little bit more brighter all right then so with those settings done let's go to build and go to lighting quality and we'll set it to medium here and I'm just going to build lighting only now obviously we've set the light maps for all these little pieces quite high and we've got many of them in here now so it will take a while to bake this light maps and one of the ways you might optimize your scene later on is to reduce the light map size and also maybe reduce the texture size as well because these are 2k at the moment which is quite high uh, but it depends on the scene and what you're using this for at the moment this is just a standalone render so it really doesn't matter we can we can keep things nice and high and sharp okay so if our lights baked you can see it's looking pretty nice now and if we hit play we can have a little look around our scene at the moment we've not set the collisions for the doorway so we won't be able to get out until we edit that but as you can see is it's not looking too bad I think the uh, roughness maps are looking quite nice so as you can see even this really really simple kit gives us the opportunity for a load of variation so you can imagine just adding a few more pieces to this would very quickly increase the potential of what we could make and we still even have a lot of other techniques at our disposal one of them might be vertex painting and vertex painting is simply creating a second version of these textures for example a muddy version and then directly painting that onto the model within UE4. We can also create decals and project those right over these modular pieces and that could be anything from dirt to posters or even paint. So I hope this tutorial has been useful and gives you some ideas of what you might like to do for your own environments. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.